Hello, you're watching News Mongolian MNB World. I'm your host, Ayun Delkiru Basenko. Our top stories. Mongolian People's Party begins its 30th Congress. Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the U.S. National Security Council representative. Sotlan Biljeng Wire won a silver medal at the World Para Powerlifting Championships. For other news, stay tuned. The Mongolian People's Party, Mongolia's oldest political party and the current ruling party began its 30th Congress on December 6. During the Congress, Prime Minister Ayung Erdogan introduced the party's new economic revival plan. The Mongolian People's Party has been active for 100 years. The 30th Congress, which is a major event for the party, began on Monday and will continue for two days. As head of the Mongolian People's Party, Prime Minister Ayun Irtin opened the Congress with a speech and introduced the government's new revival policy, a plan focused on economic independence. The new revival of the economy should be based on an affluent middle class, self-sufficiency without foreign trade and investment, stable and inclusive growth, and a multi-pillar economic structure. The pandemic revealed to us the fragility of the Mongolian economy and its highly codependent nature. This issue has been a concern for generations of government bodies. This time we realize that the problem is nationwide and it's the best time to act on it without delay. The Prime Minister also noted that it's time for Mongolia to have an economy that isn't solely based on mining, a state budget that isn't based solely on coal, and isn't importing fuel from only a few countries. The new revival policy covers several goals, including the expansion of ports, creating independent energy sources, including renewable energy, and to develop heavy industry. The most immediate goal is to upgrade the border checkpoints and expand logistics networks. The country will also aim to become a main transition point bridging Asia and Europe. Currently, more than half of the Mongolia population is centered in urban areas. The Mongolian People's Party emphasized future actions for decentralization and promoting the nomadic lifestyle in the countryside. In order to achieve the party's goals, the Prime Minister stressed the importance of having a productive government, one that isn't easily distracted by inefficient planning and election processes. The Ministry of Health provided an update on the current COVID-19 status in Mongolia. COVID-19 cases are decreasing in the country. Still, the public are advised to keep wearing face masks and get booster shots. In the past 24 hours, 296 new cases were confirmed. Three people, one woman and two men died of COVID-19 complications. All new cases were confirmed domestically, out of which 144 were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar and 152 in the rural provinces. At hospitals nationwide, 4,259 COVID-19 patients are being treated, out of them 1,573 show mild symptoms of illness and 92 are in critical condition. Additionally, over 7,800 patients are being treated at home under supervision. As of now, around 2.15 million people or 66.2% of the population have had two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine and 23% of the population has received the booster shot so far. The new Creation People 9 documentary photo exhibition was opened on December 5th. Moreover, photos from the exhibition have also been published as a book. The exhibition includes works that depict the life story of people and documented events. The photo exhibition opens every year. The exhibition features photographs depicting human stories, feelings, love and sorrow, as well as the realities of today's society. The book contains documentary photos taken over the last 22 years. This book includes photos of photographer Batsarik from the People's Exhibition. In 2013, there was an exhibition called People 2, and between 2014 and 2020, a competition called Creation People was organized among all photographers. Not everyone's work could be included in this book, so we exhibited photos after a long selection process. 
тэндээс нөө шалгаруулт хийгээд ковид болохоос 2 жилийн өмнө авсан баг. I probably took this picture about 2 years before covid was recorded in Mongolia. Here we have been celebrating a New Year's party with children with disabilities who can't leave their homes. There are NGOs that help to organize a holiday party for those children. Children were very happy when I was taking these photos. I try to express the children's inner feelings and emotions. The book contains more than 700 works by 150 photographers. Each photo was reviewed by 10 photographers and was included in the book, including comments. I wanted to show Russian society through our eyes. Those who live in Russia and know the system from the inside might have a different perspective. The families in this photo were sentenced because of their religion. They were Muslims. Could it be that society and human rights are at stake when they were sentenced to 25 years in prison? I try to show some social issues through my photos. I think it will be a message to the people. The works in this exhibition have their own unique history and require a high level of sensitivity from the photographer. Many photographers submitted their work to the exhibition, but only those that passed the screening selection were allowed to exhibit their photos. Thank you for staying tuned with us on MNB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. On December 6, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Muh Cheng held a meeting with Adam Ferrer, Director for the Korean Peninsula and Mongolia at the White House National Security Council at the Mongolian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. During the meeting, the two sides exchanged views on the further development of the Mongolia-US strategic partnership and discussed a range of issues, including expanding economic cooperation, post-pandemic cooperation, increasing trade and economic ties, and attracting investment in major projects. They also agreed to jointly celebrate the 35th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries in 2022. On December 6, an online meeting was held between the governments of Mongolia and Russia on finalizing a draft protocol for the 1994 Agreement on Simplified Border Checkpoint and State Border Crossing and the coordinated development of the country's shared ports. The Mongolian delegation was chaired by Suhbost, Director of the Department of International Law and Treaties of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Russian delegation was chaired by Mikhail Anatolievich Kokayev, Director of the State Policy Department for Border Crossing Development at the Russian Ministry of Transport. The two sides exchanged information on preparations for the signing of a draft protocol for the 1994 Agreement on Simplified Border Checkpoint and State Border Crossing and new construction and renovation at Mongolian-Russian border ports. The fourth meeting of the Working Group on Cooperation between the Government of Mongolia and the Eurasian Economic Commission was held online on December 6. The meeting was chaired by Batsitsik, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia, and Sergei Glaziev, Minister in Charge of Integration and Macroeconomics of the Eurasian Economic Commission. Representatives of relevant organizations of the two countries participated in the meeting and exchanged views on technical cooperation, hygiene, quarantine measures, customs regulations, prospects for cooperation in the industrial sector, as well as bilateral business cooperation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia and the Eurasian Economic Commission have agreed to hold a seminar on issues of mutual interest in the second half of January 2022 and will cooperate in the preparation and implementation of the seminar. The heads of the delegations commented the progress of the joint study on the possibility of concluding a free trade agreement between the government of Mongolia and the Eurasian Economic Union and reaffirmed that they would continue to work on the preparation of a joint feasibility study. The parties also agreed to extend the action plan for 2022 through 2025 under the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the Government of Mongolia and the Eurasian Economic Commission on June 15, 2015, and signed a protocol at the meeting. Now let's check on the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank.
The 2021 World Junior and Senior Championships took place in the Georgian capital Tbilisi from November 27th to December 5th. Satnum Pilche, Olympic gold medalist, won a silver medal in the 107 kg weight category. The Para Powerlifting World Championships, which started on November 27th, ended on Sunday. Satnum Pilche, a labor hero of Mongolia and Olympic gold medalist, won a silver medal in the 107 kg weight category. Alyak Parker Pshi of Iran, who won his first world title in his white class, set a new world record by lifting 251 kg. Satin Pilche won a silver medal by lifting 244 kg and a bronze medal was won by Rosaman Razi of Iran. Satin Pilche set an Olympic record by lifting 245 kg at the Tokyo Olympics. Iran won three gold, three silver and one bronze medal at the World Cup and finished second. China topped the medals table at the Tbilisi 2021 World Championships with 5 gold, 4 silver and 4 bronze medals. Nigeria took 3rd place with 3 gold, 1 silver and 2 bronze medals. It is the first edition of the World Championships in Europe since the inaugural competition in Uppsala, Sweden in 1994. Nursultan Kazakhstan hosted the last Worlds in 2019 with 430 participants representing 76 nations. And here's the weather forecast for major cities around the world. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for staying with us on News Mongolia. See you tomorrow with more stories and updates. Have a great evening. Goodbye.